Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Red Pill Garage. On today's episode, I'll be working on a Holden Commodore VF series with a 6.2 liter LS3 V8. Is your LS3 running rough with an engine misfire? Have you replaced your spark plugs and your spark plug wires and maybe even your coils and it's still running rough? Well, let me teach you how to diagnose faulty fuel injectors and replace them. Okay, first let's have a look what our symptoms are and we'll just start the engine up. Okay, you guys have probably noticed when you start your car up, the engine check light stays on and in some cases it even flashes. Now that light should go off after a couple of seconds after your car started. And this one's definitely staying on. If I let it run a bit longer, we'll start the flash. Now we have our service ESP light on, electronic stability programming light, which can affect the stability handling of the car. Now you guys don't need to go out there and buy a scan tool. I just wanted to quickly show you guys how your mechanic would diagnose your fuel injection faults. Now we've got code P0205, injector 5, control circuit, cylinder, and then we've got a P0300 fault with a generic misfire. We're going to actuation test. So misfire data. And then cylinder 5 power balance test. Take note of the RPM there as well. There we go. 160 something misfire counted. And that's climbing up again. There's the engine RPM. So over 500 and notice there's no change in the RPM that should drop down below 500. Now we'll go to cylinder 4 and I'll show you an example of that you've got to have a careful look at this one here. There you go 490 something RPM. And again there you go, 460 RPM. That's on cylinder number four. And number five, there's absolutely no change at all. So we know that cylinder there has the problem. Okay, next. We're going to do a fuel injection balance test on cylinder number five. Take note of the engine speed, it's above 500 RPM. And let's have a look at the misfire counter on cylinder number five. That number's climbing. The rest say zero. Let's look at the history. In cylinder number one, there's three counts there. Now that's a history one. It's not a current one. But let's see what we find on the fuel injection system when we start diagnosing under the bonnet. Okay, the tools I'll be using today is a mechanic stethoscope. They come in handy to pick up faults in an engine. You don't actually need to go out and buy one of these, but they are only a few dollars anyway. All you need to do is have a long flat blade screwdriver. And sometimes a screwdriver will actually work better than a stethoscope. And then you want to place the handle of the screwdriver halfway into the palm of your hand and hold it up to your ear because the noise is going to resonate out of your hand. 
Okay, next we have our 3A drive ratchet, an extension bar, a 10mm socket, a couple of swivels, a 10mm deep socket, some Vaseline, our multi-function cleaner, rapidly removes carbon deposits, sludge, gum and varnish. It's a really good product, that multi-function cleaner. It does a good job. I thought I'd just show you guys some specs. Holden Commodore VF Series 6.2 V8. Engine code LS3. It's the front of the car. So you have your odd numbers and your even numbers and your firing order. Next, side cutters, mechanics pliers, telescopic mirror, trim removing tool, couple of screwdrivers, and you're going to need a Noid light. Now you can buy these from a spare parts store, they're only a few dollars, and that's going to plug into the wiring harness of the injector plug. It's a pretty handy tool to have. There are the connectors just there. That's where the light flashes there. Couple of test wires with alligator clips attached to the end of them. A pick, a zip tie, a torch, a multimeter. You don't need it, but it does come in handy. And next, a fuel line disconnect tool set. And we're going to use a 3.8 size on that one for our fuel line. And that's what it looks like. I'll give you a closer look at it. There we go. Just a piece of plastic that we slide onto the fuel line. And because we're going to be dealing with fuel, our safety glasses. Okay, let's start by removing the engine beauty cover. And now that's off, we can move to the next step. Now I'll be using the mechanic stethoscope on cylinders 2, 4, 6 and 8, which is the driver's side of the car. So that's cylinder number 2. Next is cylinder number 4. Then 6. The last one is 8, which is always hard to get to. Now when you're checking these injectors, you want to make sure the shaft of the screwdriver or the stethoscope is not rubbing on any metallic surfaces on the engine because you're going to pick up different vibrations. Okay, on the passenger side of the car, I've placed a microphone in the palm of my hand so you guys can actually listen to what a mechanic hears when he's checking fuel injectors. That's number seven. Take note of the noise. And number five, which is our suspicious injector. Notice the difference, the number three. Difference in number five, and then number one. Number five again. Just make sure the shaft of the screwdriver is not touching anything else but the body of the injector. Back to number seven. You might want to do two, three or even four runs just to make sure you're convinced you're diagnosing the correct injector that's faulty. Did you guys notice that number five injector doesn't have that clicking noise like the other injectors did? I'll let you guys have another listen. That number five injector is definitely not working. Okay, next we're gonna disconnect the injector connector off the injector. And that gray piece you see there, that's the retainer clip for the injector connector lock. And now with our Noid light, we're gonna plug that into the injector connector. There are the two contacts there that we're going to push straight into the connector. 
And what we're looking for is a nice strong injector pulse coming from the computer. Okay, so that's pulsing or blinking now, which is really good, that's what we want. Otherwise, we'd have major problems there. But now we know the injector itself is not working because we're getting the signal from the computer there. And that's why we're seeing that pulse or that blinking in the Noid light. Okay, now it's time to disconnect all the injector connectors. Now if you're using pliers, you want to be careful not to squeeze it too hard. You don't want to get cracking or breaking any of those connectors. And make sure none of the wiring is damaged. Now we can unbolt the fuel rail. And with our zip tie, we're going to tie back those heater hoses so they're out of the way. Same goes for the driver's side, disconnect all the injector connectors and just check the wiring for any damage. And next, you want to unscrew your petrol cap. There should be a total of eight bolts holding that down. Okay, now it's time to remove the injector retainer clip. Now, you can remove the injectors on the car. I rather not. I prefer to do it on the bench. This way, you have more room to work with. On the car, you're a bit more restricted and you want to make sure the engine is dead cold because you'd be dripping fuel out of the fuel rail. And if the engine's hot, that can be pretty dangerous. So I recommend you do it on the bench and not on the car. Those injectors can be quite tight to come out because those o-ring seals dry out like a nun's nasty. And if you decide you do it on the car, make sure you place plenty of rags underneath there to sponge up all that fuel that's dripping out of that rail. Okay, next I'll be using the 3.8 fuel line disconnect tool to disconnect that fuel hose off the fuel rail. Those fuel lines can be fiddly at times. Oh, finally, she's off. Now that I've got the injector rail out of the car, you want to make sure all those little ports there where the injector sit inside, you want to make sure they're all clean. It's really important you get that clean. This is where you want to get your multi-purpose cleaner, spray it on a clean piece of rag, and dig out all that dirt you see inside those ports there where the injectors seat inside. And just take your time doing it, but it's got to be thoroughly cleaned. Okay, now it's time to pull all eight injectors out. Make sure you've got a rag handy because the rest of the fuel will be pouring out of that fuel rail. And that's what the injector looks like. Okay, what you want to look for now is the positive side of that injector. And you can just see the positive symbol there on the right hand side. Okay. And what we're going to do now, we're going to individually bench test each injector. Okay, that's number seven injector. You can hear that clicking away, so that injector's okay. And this one's number five, our problem injector. And we shouldn't hear anything coming out of that one at all. That number five injector is cactus. Next is injector three. And that one's okay. And injector number one. And that one's pulsing the fuel onto the paper as well. You can see that, that seems to be okay as well. Another test you can do is with the multimeter. Just turn the setting to ohms. Check the resistance readings. There should be roughly around 12 ohms. So 
So that's number seven. We've got 12.1 ohms, which is okay. And let's have a look at our faulty injector, number five. Six mega ohms. That's definitely kicked the bucket, that one. Now what you want to do before you start putting the new injectors into the rail, you want to just quickly check the resistance readings of the new injectors just to make sure you don't have any faulty ones. And they should be roughly all around 12 ohms. Okay, that's the part number of the injectors if you guys are interested and that's the brand that I use, which is a genuine brand. And next stage is to lube up the injector seals. You want to make sure you make it all nice and slippery so it slides into that rail. And make sure you don't get it inside the injector but on the actual o-ring itself. And it just slips straight in there. And make sure you only use Vaseline. Okay, this next step's a bit tricky. Those injector retainer clips, you want to make sure they're in there properly. They've got to be locked in there. Otherwise, the injector could dislodge and squirt fuel out and you'll have a major fire on your hands. Okay, you can see the flare of the fuel rail, how it slips into the groove of the retainer clip. If it's not in there, that means it's not locked in. You've got to take your time doing this. Don't rush it and double check. And there's the groove of the injector. So that retainer clip has got to slide into that groove. That's the old injector and old retainer clip. I'm just showing that as an example. It just snaps in the place. And that's the way it's got to sit into the injector. Now I'm just going to point out that's that groove there, that slot. The flare of the fuel rail has got to go into that slot, into that gap that I'm pointing out to you there. If it's not in that gap, she's not locked in. Now this is really important to get this right. And that's the flare I'm talking about on the fuel rail. So it's got to sit inside that gap of the retainer clip. You can see that injector won't come out now because it's locked in place. Now it's time to lube up the opposite side of the injector and only put lube on the o-ring itself, not on the face of the injector. And make sure those little ports are all cleaned out and you want to double check. And now it's time to put the fuel rail and injectors in place. You want to seat in the opposite side first. So in this case, the driver's side, make sure they all line up. And once they all line up, then you can push down the passenger side. Now it should go in quite easy because all the seals have been lubricated. Just like that. And that plate there where it's mounted onto the manifold, that should be flush, you know it's in all the way. And do the same to the other side. Nice and easy. Never force it in there. If you have to force it, there's something wrong. You have to pull it back out and have a look. More than likely, there's not enough lube on the, on the O-rings themselves. Now you can start mounting all the bolts back in the place and all the injector connectors. 
and make sure you push down those grey retainers to lock into place so the injector can't unplug by itself. And when you're pushing them in, you would hear a clicking noise. Then you know the injector plug is locked into place. Okay, next push your fuel hose onto the fuel rail. And then the fuel hose locking clip. And that movement you see there in the hose, that's quite normal. And then just finish tightening up all eight bolts. Okay, now it's time to start the engine up. And just double check your work and make sure you've got no fuel leaks. And you want to take your time having a look here because you want to just double check all your work because it's really important you don't miss anything here. Now's the time to catch it if something was to go wrong. Sure looks pretty dry on the driver's side. Passenger side looks all good as well. And now you can screw on the fuel cap. Okay, we have no engine check line on at the moment. Now, I actually had to replace the car battery for the owner of the car. He wanted me to replace the battery. Now, if I didn't replace that battery, that light would still be on. So if you're doing this job at home, you'll find that the light will still be on and you have to manually clear it, either with a scan tool or disconnect the battery and it should wipe itself off. But I'm still going to go into the scan tool and have a look, and make sure everything's okay, just to double check our work. No DTC, no diagnostic trouble codes. So that's good. Go into an actuation test. Scroll down, still in the five power balance. Can scroll down to number five. Misfire counter, yeah. zero. zero. Excellent. So we know the car's fixed now. Inject the five balance. Zero count, excellent. She's come good, I'm absolutely stoked. Okay, now it's time to cut off that zip tie and put those heater hoses back in place. And the engine beauty cover. And the last thing to do is take it for a test drive and see how she goes. Now you know you can give it a bell. It doesn't look so daunting after all, does it? If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button not to miss out on any future videos. And I'll see you on the next episode of Red Pill Garage. Thank you for watching.